2.2, the power rule, okay? So it does a lot of setting it up here. We'll get some examples and whatnot, but we're now we're getting into derivatives. So again, to be clear, to be concise, guys, the derivative gives us the tangent slope. When we do the derivative, it gives us the tangent slope. And it may give it to us in terms of a function. If it gives us a term of the function, what's that mean? That means if we want to find tangent at a certain point, we have to plug that point in. So that quick example from Friday, the, the derivative of x squared is 2x. You drop the 2, okay, it was 2x. That means the, the slope is changing by a constant of 2 for each x. Okay, so once you get through this and you figure out what you're doing, derivative and tangent slope should be married. You should, in your mind, you should be like tangent slope, derivative. Okay, I got it. Okay, so that's the part I said you'd be mad at me about. We did the f of a plus h and all that stuff to find the tangent slope with limits. We don't need that now as that's the definition of a derivative. Okay, there is a couple of like proofs in here. I won't go through those like really thoroughly and one I cut out because it just was, I know you probably just want to shoot yourself because it's really <laughs> long and gross and a bunch of variables. So I didn't want that to happen. I didn't want to lose you, but you can look at it in the book if you'd like. Okay, so fortunately there are several rules that greatly simplify the task of differentiation. The first rule tells us how to find the derivative of a constant function. So the derivative of a constant function is zero. Okay, so if I have a constant, the derivative of a seven is zero every time. Okay? All right, so keep on going here. Y equals C, it's a constant, so the derivative of that is going to be zero. Why is it zero? Because it's going to go, there isn't, like, any way I go, it's going to go through at one spot. So it, there is not one. Okay, there isn't going to be a change. Everybody good with the constant? Okay. So if f of x is 7, f prime of x is 0. Okay, if y is pi, y prime is 0. The derivative of negative 4.5 is zero. This is just examples of what they're talking about. These are all notations. This is original. This is derivative. Derivative of equals zero. d over dx means derivative with respect to x. Any questions with that? Remember, constant's a, a number without a variable, so it's not changing. Okay. So 4 is always 4, but 4x changes because of the x. So if x is x equal to 4.5, the derivative of it will be 0. The derivative of it will be 0. Yeah. Yes. Deriv the derivative of the constant is always 0. Yep. Oops. No, I did it right. Why is it writing over there? Hmm. Okay, we got a problem here. Hold on. Oh, I know what I did. Sorry. Never mind. We don't have a problem. <laughs> All right. Okay. So the next rule gives us the formula for differentiating the power function of f of x equals x to the n. We've already computed derivatives of special cases, the power function, example 3 and 2.1. We showed that d of dx of x squared is 2x. And we did it the long way. But by the power rule, which is right here, the one we wrote down on Friday, is that Derivative, derivative respect to x in this situation with the power is you drop the n, drop the exponent, and then you take one off the exponent, and that's the derivative. So for x squared, you drop the 2, the 2's in front, 2 minus 1 is a 1. So that's a 1 up there. That's the power rule. So when you're doing the derivative, you drop the power in front. If there's something out there, you multiply it. We're going to go over that. So we drop the power in front and subtract 1 from the exponent, even if it's negative. So if it's like x to the negative 3, I drop the negative 3, and I minus 1, which would be negative 4. Okay? So that would be the derivative. So this yields the power rule. So you want to write that down. This is pretty important for use. So again, here we go. Derivative d over dx of x cubed is 3x squared. Drop the 3. 3 minus 1 is 2. d over dx of x to the 4, drop the 4, 4x minus 1 is 3, 4x cubed. Okay? So you can kind of see that derivatives, guys and gals, is that 
the derivative of a function is one degree less than the previous. So like x squared, it was 2x. So that function of that slope changing was linear. x cubed, this function is a parabola that represents the uh, pattern of the tangent slope. Okay, so these things are important to kind of notice in terms of as we go forward. Okay. Any questions? You got all that, Emily? You good? Okay. All right, so for example, let's do these ones. So uh, let's talk about these ones. So f of x is x to the 7. f prime of x, derivative. Drop the 7, subtract 1, 7x to the 6. The kind of redundant example is say, well, well, x to the 100, drop the 100, minus 1, x to the 99. y equals t to the 5th, drop the 5, 5t to the 4th. And then u uh, to the 9 equals 9u to the 8th. That is the power rule. Here, let you write. All right. So then find the equation of the tangent line of the curve y equals x to the 6, the point negative 264. So we're just going to go ahead and take the derivative of this. So we're going to do the derivative. So the y prime, okay, is 6x to the fifth. That's the equation that will give me the slope. So the slope, I plug in negative 2 here. So I'm going to go m, essentially, the, the tangent slope, is going to be 6 times negative 2 to the fifth. Negative 2 to the fifth is negative 32 times 6 is negative 192. What do you think? Yeah. So negative 192 is my slope. So now you have to do your linear work. We got y. We got x, 64 equals negative 192 times negative 2 plus b. 64 equals 384 plus b. So negative 320. So your equation for your tangent line that right there. Much quicker now with derivatives. Questions with that? And that red box down there is just a general power rule. Okay? Just what we've already, which you've kind of already written down. Questions? Why is negative 192 for what? Here? Because that's my slope, right? So this this is y equals mx. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, pause it for a second here. Okay, so. So differentiate these ones. So now these are kind of weird because one, we don't really see the exponents. And what do I do with the one? Well, you want to write things if you can, okay, with just a single power. So how can I write one over x cubed to the single power? X to negative three. So we want to use that to our advantage. Okay, use that to your advantage. So now we drop the negative three, put up the negative four, okay, and that's that's it. That's what f prime is going to be. You also could rewrite this if you wanted. Is that if you'd like? It's the same thing. Okay, so one over x cubed Joseph is the same thing as x to the negative three. 
So by the power rule, you drop a negative 3, then you minus 1. Okay? What about root x? Yeah, x to the 1 half. This is where things are going to get complicated for us going forward, is when you guys get fractions up here. And it's not negative 1 half, sorry, it's positive. Because if I drop a half, okay, what's 1 half minus 1? Negative 1 half. So now that's a negative. So if I write that with positives, it's going to be this. So I want to push that down. It doesn't ask me to do that right now. I'll just let you know. Okay, anything I do there, confusing. They're not doing that in the book. The book, they're just leaving everything with negatives. And so how can I write this without exponents? And I can also take another step, and I can go, that's the same thing as that. 1 over 2 root x. Take it back to what it was. So you can see how we kind of rewrite things and with the exponent stuff to our advantage with derivatives. Okay? The radicals is going to be the biggest type of thing. Same thing with cube roots or anything ugly like that. We can kind of change them to be more doable things if we write them as exponents and then switch them back. We can do that. Okay, any questions on those? Okay, we're going to get to differentiation, okay, with uh, a number in front. Okay, so next rule says the derivative of a constant times a function is the constant times the derivative of the function. So all that means is, is that whatever you pull down, if there's something in front, they multiply. That's all the rule is, okay? Which makes sense, because it's multiplying to begin with. So if I take this 3 down, it's 3 times 8, x to the 2. 3 times 8 is 24, x squared. Pull the 8 thirds down. Or no. 5 thirds. Okay, there's that. Which would be this. Okay, there's how you do them. Any questions on those? Okay. All right. So let's go to the next one here. I want you to see if you can try this one. I'm going to challenge you. I'll pause the video, but I'm going to challenge you to see what you would try to do.